Hello, Angie Gerber here, and welcome to my podcast, Awareness. Once you know, you can't unknow. A place you can come to start thinking and shifting your thoughts to finally create the results you truly, truly desire. It'll shift your mindset and give you strategies to get out there and get it done. Let's get started. On this week's episode, we'll be talking about the higher faculty imagination. Now, this is a good one, and it really connects directly, I believe, with will, which is what we talked about a couple weeks ago. I think the two are connected, and I'll explain why. Uh, But first and foremost, the imagination is so vitally important as a higher faculty. I mean, even Albert Einstein saw the beauty and the opportunity and how powerful our minds are. And if you use your imagination the correct way, you can really have whatever it is you truly desire. I mean, go back to when you were a child. We, most of us at least as children, were encouraged to use our imagination. Go outside, find something to do, make up a game, grab a box, make a fort, um, pots and pans, art, drawing, coloring. Oh, that looks so great. And you can't even tell what it is. But we were so encouraged to use our imagination and just do whatever it is our hearts desired. And then we got to school. And it was pay attention. Why are you daydreaming? Look over here draw in the lines, you know, all of what we were first experiencing kind of abruptly halted for most all of us. Some, maybe not, but I'm going to say most all of us. And we were learned to conform. We were learned to gather all this information at school and then you'll be tested on it, you'll be judged on it, and you'll know your worthiness based upon how you you take knowledge, you take information, you process it, and then you can repeat it back or take a test and show and prove that you understand it. Uh, now, I'm all for education. I think it's very important. And I also think that we all have our God-given born gifts and strengths, and those are equally as important. And the imagination is one of those that I think should always be a muscle that we're flexing. I mean, look around you, what you're experiencing, what you're wearing, what shoes you have on, what you're sitting on, or what shoes you're walking in, what's hanging on your walls, All of that, everything that's in our outside environment was once a thought that someone held in their imagination. Everything is created twice. First, in your mind, in your imagination, and then second, it comes to form. That's part of the creation process. So for us to cut off our imagination and not use it, to our full advantage, use it for what it's intended for, is just, we're missing a huge, huge, huge opportunity. I mean, that's part of the goal process in setting your goals and achieving your goals. Imagination and will are so connected because what you want to do is strengthen your will, as I talked about a couple episodes ago. Strengthen your will so that when you're using your imagination, you can, without distraction, hold the picture of what it is you truly desire on the screen of your mind and hold it there and use your imagination as if it's already here and done. What my coach is teaching me and talking to me about, and this is going to be today, tomorrow, every day until the day I leave this earth, what you want to do is connect to your 
desire, your goal, that one that you don't know how you're going to do it, but you know you want it, that goal. You connect to it using your imagination all day, every day. And you want to feel it as if it's an hour after it's already done. So set an alarm on your phone every two to three hours. You write out your goal, shut your eyes and visualize and feel what it feels like an hour after you've achieved it. Use your imagination. It's through using your imagination and impressing upon your subconscious over and over and over again that feeling of it already being done, that your subconscious has to accept it. Again, it cannot reject. It has to accept it. And once it's accepted it, the universe accepts it. And that's where the people, conditions, circumstances, money, opportunities, all of it will be put in your way because it's already done. And it all starts with a desire, the desire to do it. And then by using your will and your imagination Two of your higher faculties, it can be done. The unfortunate thing is what happens for 90% of the population is they look at their current results. And all your current results are telling you is your thinking from the past. It has nothing, zero to do with your future. Zero percent to do with your future, your current results, what's in your bank account, where you're at job wise, relationship wise, where you're living, whatever it is. Be grateful for where you're at and never satisfied and know that your current results have nothing to do with where you're going unless you let them. And that is where most all people sit as they look at the outside. They look at what's happening. They look at the economy. They look at their bank account and they they feel those feelings of low vibration. And then because they feel that, that's what they get more of because what you put out, you get back. Again, it's a boomerang. It's going to smack you in the back of the head. So you might as well think positive, think what you want. And that's where Let's take your bank account. Look at your bank account. If it's not where you want it to be, say that's interesting. Come at it from a neutral standpoint and decide what it is you do want and focus on that. Focus on connecting to that all day, every day. It's almost like you want to be just obsessed with your goal. You want a healthy real obsession. And that's why it's got to be something that means something to you. It's got to be part of your why. It's got to be something that gets you up in the morning. You want to almost jump out of bed because you're so excited to see what you can do with the day and show up in that energy and come from that place. The way for everything to happen, to do everything we're doing today has always been here. It's just the awareness wasn't there. I mean, go back to the Wright brothers. They were ridiculed beyond, oh, I can't even tell you what their neighbors were saying, what everyone was saying about how crazy they were and give up on your dream. There's never going to be flight. Like you're not going to get that off the ground. Had they given up? I mean, that's why you think and talk about and there's so many people that they were the trailblazers because if they didn't, find the awareness and really shut off all the noise around them, it would have altered where we're at today. Maybe only by a a month, a year, a decade, but everything would have been altered. Henry Ford with the automobile. Horses are fine. Why would you need a car? You know, the internet Think about how much, I mean, in my lifetime, I was born in the 70s. In my lifetime, that's come about. Think about, you know, the grandparents that were in their 90s, everything they've seen from when they were born to when they're at today. It's all already out there. It's just the awareness around all these things. Someone's become aware of it 
and they've made a decision and they've failed through it all and they've figured it out and they've taken every failure, the feedback from it and gone at it again and gone at it again. You see, part of the creation process, there's three parts. The beginning, which is making the decision. It's hard. It's hard to make that decision. And and really, if it's a big one, it's going to test you. And you're going to, you're going to doubt yourself a lot in those paradigms and that habitual behavior that's been programmed in us is going to come up over and over and over again. And once you get past that part, then you get in the mess, it gets really, really messy. There's a lot of questionable things again. Should I do this? Should I not do that? Um, Failing forward, taking feedback, um, people around you, you'll gain some new people and you lose some people. It's a very, very emotional almost place to be because I've been through it. And yet, once you get the hard decision made, you get through the messiness of it. On the other side is freedom. And that's where I talk so much about you need to have faith over fear. It's the terror barrier, trampling the terror barrier, because you're going to come up across that if your idea is big enough and you don't know the how, you just know you're going after it. You're going to hit that terror barrier so often, and it's hitting it and hitting it until you break through it. And that's where fear over faith comes in. And that's where you don't look at your current results. You, you really have to make an irrevocable committed decision every day. Again, day one, every day, get up and recommit. Recommit to yourself, recommit to your goal. How are you going to get better today? How are you going to serve others better today? Who are you going to help? And make a decision that today is going to be an amazing day. And go into your day with that energy and backing it all up. If you don't have a goal or a purpose or a desire, then you're not going to wake up in that energy. And if your why isn't big enough and you don't understand it and it's not in the forefront of your mind, it's not, you're not going to feel that. You're not going to show up wanting to conquer everything that needs to be conquered and not in having faith over fear, you're just going to let the circumstances, your current circumstances, the outside world control what you do, you'll just get up and you'll do what you do every day, because that's what you do. And that's what you've done. And that's just how it has to be. Well, that's how you're choosing it for to be. That's not how it has to be. And if I am not proof enough of that, from where I've been to where I am and to where I'm going, I mean, I can give you case study after case study, person after person after person, that if you follow this process, and it's a process, that's why only 1%, maybe up to three, but I've been told it's closer to 1% of people are truly successful in making most all the money, 97% of the money, if that's what your goal is, is because they understand this, they get it, and they're committed to it. They made the decision. And it's just trying it just like I did. Back in 2017, I tried this, I had to be at a pretty rock bottom low. But Bob Proctor said, he said, do what I tell you until you find out I'm either lying, or I don't know what I'm talking about. And I was like, okay, I can do that. And I'm still here because I'm telling you it, he was not lying. He does know what he's talking about and it does work. You have to do the work. And that's the difference. I was talking with my accountability partner and I think I might share this. I'm going to share it again because I think it's really, really good. I text her, we can do hard things because every day <laughs> you should be failing you really, if if you're going after it, you should be getting the feedback from failing every single day. And I was having one of those days. I said, we can do hard things. And she texts me back something so simple, and yet it shifted everything for me in that moment. It just hit a chord with me. It struck it. And she wrote back, we make hard things look easy. 
and the perception and the shift and the change. I mean, it is words, people. Your words matter. What you're saying, what you're thinking, your subconscious is always eavesdropping on you. So think, 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 and know your words matter. Whether you're speaking them or thinking them, they matter. And even just that little shift, we make hard things look easy versus we can do hard things. Two completely different perceptions and way to look at ways to look at it. And it's a shift and it shifted everything for me. I'm like, yeah, I know this stuff. And yet I'm saying hard things, hard things, hard things. You know, we can do it. We can do it. And just that shift. I mean, just think about it. Write it down. Write, get up every morning and write down what you want your life to look like a year from today and rewrite it and rewrite it every day. Because even after a week of doing that, day one is going to look so extremely different than day seven. And you may have been listening to this podcast, you may hear me say the same things over and over and over again. And that's okay. Because repetition, 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 that is very important in this process. And you are never going to be the same person. So whether you listen over and over and over again, you read the same book over and over and over again, you know, you find the coach or the mentor and you watch their stuff over and over and over again, you will never hear it the same because you will never be the same because you are changing every day and you will hear it differently. You will see it differently, whether it's the 10th time or the thousandth time. Trust me, I've been there. I've done this. You'll get a different aha. Your perception will be different. You'll have gone through something different since the last time, even if it's a day or two. You will pick up on something different because when you watch something or read something or listen to something, the first time through, you're really only gathering like 20 to 25% of the message. So it's through the repetition and going back over and over and over again that it will become more clear. It will seep into your subconscious. It will become a habit. That's why they say it takes, you know, some say 21, some say 66, some say 90 days to form an actual habit because you are so in your ways of what you're doing. It takes time. It takes effort. You have to be deliberate and you have to make a decision. And when that paradigm sneaks in and says, oh, you don't have to do it today, or you did it yesterday, or the sun's out, you should just go do this or that. Uh, you're, you're not committed. You're not committed to your goal. Irrevocable committed decisions. That's where the 1% play. The 1% that are the successful, the most successful. So you decide. You want to be in the 90 to 95% of people that just do what they do because that's what they do? Or do you want to step out and you want to be in that other small percentage, that small group of people that get this, that live by this, that understand that just because you are where you're at today, that means nothing to where you can go. Yes, everything happens for a reason and it's prepared you. So how has your past prepared you for where you're going? Just know it has. And two most important days, the day you're born and the day you find out why. And if you're not sure on the why, there's some exercises you can do. You can journal. You can just use your imagination and write out if you could wake up tomorrow and you Nothing was a barrier, money, location, whatever it is that your heart truly wants to do, that your spirit, that your soul was meant to do and is here to do, write that out. What would that be? 
And then it's through connecting to that throughout the day over and over and over again, every day, all day long, that the things, the circumstances, the condition, the people, the opportunities, the money will be put in your place. You, you get to do the work. You get to choose. I'm not going to say you have to do the work. You get to do the work. You get to do the work. And everything that's happened for you, not to you, everything that's happened for you up to this point is in preparation for where you're going. So thanks so much for joining today. Please leave a comment, share, like, follow, whatever, whatever you can do to get this out to to other people that you know should have this information because everyone should have this information it's amazing. and It's life changing and leave comments. I would love to hear um, how this is changing. Is this changing you? It should be if you're listening. And if you're really paying attention, and if you're opening your mind up to other opportunities and other options in choosing to have a different perception, then there should be some shifts. And I would just love to hear, hear any of them. So until next time, have a great day. Thanks for spending some time with me today. And if you like what you heard, feel free to share, like, subscribe, follow, do whatever it is you do. I'd love to get this out to as many people as possible because it truly all does start with awareness. Once you know, you cannot unknow and it changes everything. And of course, if I can help in any way, I'm here and happy to do so. Until next time, make it a good one.